I had spent most of my day walking about the roads, further away from my house, thinking that distance was a healer, but it was not. As far as I could go, my mind still pondered on these devilish thoughts that preyed day and night upon my very mind. I could no longer turn back or run away. I was trapped like a man in a cage. But my cage was the world. It was getting late. Rain kept me wet. Lightning streaked ominously across the horizon, followed by the tumultuous crack of thunder. I ran down the street through the puddles to my house and opened the door. There was no noise inside. Silent, as if I had entered another world, another dimension. I called out to my wife, but there was no answer. She had gone out again and left me to be. I closed the door shut and was immersed in darkness, too afraid to put the lights on, lest I be seen. <clears throat> I prepared a small meal of salad and cheese, washed down by a small cup of tea, constantly looking around me, as if these hobgoblins would jump and see me. But today seemed different, quiet, almost like the time before they came. I settled to bed with an almost comforting peace and fell into sleep easily. But from this eerie silence came the nightmare, for in dreams we find solace, but also a gilded cage, for in sleep you lose control and are at the mercy on the mind. And within it I saw horrifying events that seemed to take place within the walls of my house. I saw a little child being murdered by a man who wore a black hood so tightly about his face that no features could be determined. I saw him place the girl on the wall and brick it up, brick by brick, the girl screaming out. But the hooded man did not say a word, and all the time I saw this, I felt that he knew that I was watching. I felt him within my body. After he had bricked up the wall, he turned to face me and ran up close. I jumped out of my bed, screaming, for in those last seconds of this night terror, I saw his face, or should I say, a place where a face should be, for it was round and smooth and black, but I saw no mouth, I saw no nose. I sat in my bed, my hands clinching onto the crumpled up sheets, sweating and panting as my heart palpitated. The silence ensued and I lay back down after taking a tablet that my doctor had given me. I looked to the crack in the door, and I started to imagine figures shadowy and dark walking past like a fleeting glimpse. With such speed I could not make out nothing but the shadow. I closed my eyes and opened them again, and then I saw a figure at the bottom of the bed, as real as I'm here to you now. I shouted, Be gone! Be gone in a shrill, for my voice had reached a pitch only those in fear know. And then the image faded. Was it real, I thought, but even though the figure had gone, I still felt an uneasiness about the room. I could feel spirits, creatures running about me, the bed jumping at me, landing on me, but I could not feel them. I could just sense they were there. But were they there? Sometimes man imagines senses, the sense of trepidation or fear, but has no logical sense to do so. And this was the same I told my mind, you are letting your dreams turn into reality. Be quiet, be still, there is nothing in this room now. I am alone, there are no spirits. But I cannot shake off this feeling of there being something in my room with me. I kept looking to the back and the side with the corner of my eye and imagined there to be 
an invisible creature. They were trying to scare me. Because I could not even see it. Was it even there? Outside, two cats started to fight and screamed undeadly noises before a thud was heard on my fence. And then silence. I jumped out of bed and looked to the window, but could see no cat. It seemed quiet out there. And then, to my horror, I saw something that even I am too afraid to pen. I saw him, the black hooded figure from my dream, standing by a lamppost, looking towards the ground. I shut the curtains with speed. My breathing had stopped. I felt my heart was to pop. How could it be that which I had dreamed was taking shape, was taken to reality? I had to be sure. Maybe I just imagined him. And so I pulled back the curtain for a second look. And indeed, he was there, looking to the ground. And as I s stared, he started to move. I wanted to move away to shut the curtain, but I could not. I had the desire to stay and watch. I was a fool. I thought like I was still in the dreamlands, but I was not. This was reality, and unlike a nightmare, this I could not wake off. And so he started to turn his head towards me until it tilted rather disjointedly towards the direction of my window, and there I could see his face. And just like the dream, it had no features. My face was struck with terror, as if I was screaming for all my life. Then he started to run. He began to charge down the long road towards my house. I jumped off the bed. I had to run to lock all the doors. He was coming for me, coming to kill me, as he had done the girl, for I had seen but how I thought. How had I seen a thing that was before my time? But this was simple, for he had been in this very room with me and had induced a dream whilst I slept. I ran and ran straight down the long corridor, slipping down the last few stairs and locked the front door shut. I pressed the door shut with my hands, so much so they made them red. And with a resolution of strength, I waited for him to come. I was ready for this deadly showdown to take place. But there was no sign of him. He did not come. And so the night ended, and the dawn broke through, and at the bottom of the stairs by the door was I left. What was I to do? Who could save me from these creatures of power? Who can evade man's dreams, man's reality, and take hold of man's fear and wrap it up around his neck tight, leaving just enough room for him to breathe.